Okay, welcome to the final part of this tutorial series. Um, if you remember where we left off last time, um, we had the file list.php file complete, and these links link to download.php, and they gave the file ID of the file. Um, at the moment, this doesn't do anything, as you can probably see. Um, so, what we're going to do this uh, in this video is um, we're going to code the download.php file. Um, it's going to do a few checks, make sure the file ID is valid to make sure that the file is actually in the database and then it's going to serve the file if um, it is. Um, there's also a quick security thing I need to mention at the end of the um, once it's done. <laughs> so well I'll get to that when we get there. Um, this is where we left off with the code. Um, I'm just going to copy this include and go to the download file paste that there. Um, and then we can get started. Um, first thing we want to do is check if the file ID has been sent. And we're going to do that using the isSet function that I mentioned before. And the get variable file ID. File ID. And then in here we want to define this new variable. File ID equals int get file ID. Um, I've mentioned the reason for this before, it will cast type casting this to an integer, will drop any non-numeric characters, preventing SQL injection and making it nice and safe. Um, next thing we want to do is the query to um, get the information on the file from the database. Do that using the MySQL query function. And the query is going to be select file name file expiry Yep, from files table name where the file ID is equal to the file ID we just got. File ID, like that. So that will select, um, it'll select the row for the given file, basically. Um, so the first check we want to do um, is to make sure that the file is in the database and also to make sure that the um, uh, file hasn't expired, so we do that by first checking the number of rows, uh, like so. If um, MySQL num rows num num rows file not equal to no, I'm sorry is equal to one. Um, no, yeah, not equal to one. If the file ID is not equal to one, if the uh, number of rows is not equal to one. We want to show a message saying that the file ID is invalid. So we're going to echo a string, which is going to say invalid file ID. Like so. Uh, the next thing we want to do, if that uh, condition is not met, if there is one row, um, I should point out why I did not equal to one. Um, I prefer to first check the error condition. Um, for example, you check you check for the thing that causes the error and then show an error message. So say if you want to check, do more checks, you could do else if something else that causes an error, like error, and then you could error, and then you could show a message here, keep doing else if, else if, else if for every condition that would cause an error, showing the appropriate message. And then finally in the else block you process the code, because when you get to there that means none of the error conditions have been met. But in this case we only have well we do have two, but we need to um, get something some other information first, so we have to do it inside the else block. Um, row, we need to get the row, row from the table, the data to check if the file has expired. Um, so we do that using the MySQL fetch a sock function like we did before on the query result, which is file. Uh, you don't need any kind of loop when you only want one row because this query, uh, the um, row pointer defaults to zero or one, oh, the top row basically. Um, so just calling this, we'll just fetch the top row like that, we'll fetch row 1. Hopefully there will only be one row, so that's fine. Um, we could have this here, and then not here, obviously, and then use the if else if thing I just mentioned, but it makes more sense not to have to fetch the row if the file ID is invalid. So um, what we do next is check if the file is expired. We're going to do that using another if statement. Um, we're going to do if row file expiry uh, is less than the current time that means the file has 
expired, does it? Yeah, that means the file expired. If the current time has gone past the time that we set as the expiry time, um, then the file's expired. So now here we need to show a message telling the user that the file expired. This, whoops, this file has expired. Sorry. Okay. Um, if that condition has not been met, we need to download the file. So in this else block here, um, the number of rows is one, which means the file ID is valid, and the file ha expiry time is less than the current time, which means the file is not expired. So here we download the file. The first thing we're going to do to accomplish that is define this path variable, which is going to be the path on the server to the actual file data, and that's going to be um, the core folder, if you remember the file structure from the first video, core, uh, core folder slash files slash the file name, which is row file name, like so. Um, the next thing we need to do is send some headers to the browser. We do that using the header function. Um, obviously, well, I'll show you why. I can't remember these headers. I'm pretty sure not many people do remember them. So I have them in that untitled document, which you, some of you are probably wondering about from, from the first video. Um, so you basically, this header function it takes a single no, it takes two parameters. The second one is optional. It tells you it tells the uh, it tells PHP whether to overwrite an existing header or not. Um, it defaults to false, so we just want to keep sending multiple headers. Um, basically, it sends a header HTTP header to the browser. Um, these headers do things like this: these first two identify the content type. These ones do some do some other things. Content length tells the browser the file size so it will so it will show the download percentage correctly. Um, well, the reason there are two of this first one is that Internet Explorer before version 4 I think or version 5 maybe um, it treated this incorrectly so you need the one without the dash as well. Uh, basically IE before IE5 or whichever version of IE is broken, most of them, um, will ignore this and standards compliant working correct good browsers will ignore this so it doesn't cause any problems these two will force the download sorry these two will force the download um, this makes the file upload for our file download box appear this one sets the file name that appears in the download box and this one tells the browser how long the file is um, so there are some things we need to fill in, like the file name here between these two double quotes. Um, row file name, um, and then this it needs to be got with the file size function. File size path. File size function path path right. The file fi file size function takes one parameter, um, that being the full path to the file on the server, not the file name. Well, it could be the file name if you were working in the same folder um, and it returns the number of uh, bytes the file size in bytes which is what this header uh, should be okay um, then once we have that we need to use the read file function which works fairly similar similarly similarly to the um, file size function except that it will in that it takes one parameter and that it um, outputs the entire contents of the file to the screen the browser the output buffer, whatever you want to call it. Um, so yeah, that's that file done. Hit save, and we should be ready for a test. If I go to my browser, just hit refresh, you see we get the file has expired, which is good, because that's the file we uploaded quite a while ago. Um, so if I now go back to our directory listing, just go to the upload file, type in 20, 20 minutes, uh, and I'll just upload a different file, I'll upload that, hit upload, Files uploaded. We go to the database. You see it's inserted to the database. Um, if we go back to our file list, you'll see that, that has appeared. Um, if I just click on it. You see we get the download box with the fact that it's a PNG image, the server, nest, uh, server address, and the file name. If I just hit OK, oh no, uh, the uh, something has gone horribly wrong. What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? Uh, read file path. Yeah, it's about the file path wrong. That should, that should, I had a file there, but you're all screaming at the screen. Sorry, terrible. Um, so it's core slash core slash files, not core slash file. 
I'm sure I said that at the time. Anyway, um, if I go back to the here and just click on that again, just click open. You see now we get the ridiculously large image, which I can't even fit in the shot. But never mind. Okay, sorry about that. It's working now. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, one thing that I do need to point out is about that security thing that I mentioned earlier. Um, obviously, it's, you don't want people to be able to download the file when it's expired, but at the moment, people can just browse directly to the core slash files folder and see the list of files and get that file from there. We want to prevent them doing this. We don't want that to work, basically. We do that using a HT access file, which we're going to put in this core folder, which will prevent any direct access to anything in this core folder. Um, so I'm just going to create a new empty file, call it .htaccess. I'm going to open that file up, and then we're going to put one line here, which is deny from all. And if we go back to our browser now, just hit reload, you see we get this error 403 permission denied um, thing. Basically, nobody will ever be able to access any um, any file, any folder inside the core folder. Uh, PHP, however, will still be able to include files from there because that doesn't go via the web browser. So that's that security thing that I mentioned earlier. File expired. This one works. So that is pretty much the end of this series. Um, this is my first um, tutorial, so uh, any comments on how I could improve it, how I could make it better, perhaps you didn't find my explanations particularly good, perhaps you did, I'd like to know about that too. Um, so yeah, basically what I'm trying to say is leave me a comment on this video or on the forum which I probably will post these on. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, hopefully there'll be another one next week.